Have you ever wished that you could see in the dark? To hunt like the creatures of the night? That technology is becoming more and more affordable every single year. But some of the companies that are offering products to us, well, it's hard to know what the long-term quality is going to be. I don't mind the notion that I'm going to have to pay to play, but I do want to know if I'm spending my money that somebody's going to stand behind it and that it's going to work on the equipment I already have. Hey everybody, it's PJ from Wisconsin Air Gunners and uh, I'm pretty happy today to be talking about the PARD 007 Day Night Add-on Scope Recorder. Um, I've had my eye on the PARD units for quite some time. They're used a lot by air gunners in the UK for rat and rabbit shooting but really not, I would say, available here in the U.S. I was really excited when I was talking to the guys out at Northeast Air Guns that they were going to be bringing these in. And I, I, was, I was on Instagram in minutes saying, hey, I'd really like to, to be able to do a review on the unit. Um, I've had the opportunity to look at some units that look exactly like this. I mean, like, really look a lot like this. Um, but I haven't been terribly impressed with the quality and I have been decidedly unimpressed with the warranty service. So, um, two things going on there. One, a quality unit and two, someone who's willing to stand behind it as an importer. Those, uh, those start checking some major boxes for me, especially when you're, um, making an investment in a piece of kit that you expect to last for a while. So today's video is about the PARD 007. Um, the guys at Northeast are bringing these in now, and hopefully they'll also be bringing in the NV008 laser rangefinder version, which I think uh, is going to be pretty cool. Now the difference between the two, this is intended to clip onto your existing scope, and we'll talk about some advantages of that. The 008 is a whole scope in and of itself, so it's an electronic reticle on a screen, but because it has its own rangefinder, allows you to do some basic dope work, um, and I think that kind of sets it apart from some of the other standalone scopes that are out there. So, let's talk about this and how it works. Now, before we get too far into the unit itself, I want to talk about how it connects. Um, the first thing that I'm going to recommend, if you are going to invest in one of these, um, get rid of the PARD mount. It's not awful, but there's something way better out there, and you guessed it, the guys at Northeast are bringing these in too. This is an Eagle Vision mount. So what this does is actually replaces the one that comes with PARD. Um, and, uh, you know, they did an okay job with the OEM mount. This is a step up. Um, it makes it faster, easier, and more stable, and certainly easier to move it from gun to gun. And basically, it's a direct bayonet fit onto the unit right here. So you just put it in there, and then it clicks right into place. It uses the PARD's little uh, lever there. Uh, this part, when you set it up on your scope, you back this out, you slide it over the ocular bell, and then you tighten it down. So here's what it looks like when you have it added on to a scope. In this case, my Element Optics Helix. This is the 4 to 16 first focal plane. Anyway, one of the advantages of using a night vision that's an add-on like this is that you get to use your scope's normal holdover points or if you're like me and you dial for elevation you get to use your own turrets um, and that's actually pretty sweet it does require that you are set up and know your ranges before you get out and are starting to shoot Oh, and uh, I forgot, 
I wanted to show you what it looks like on a scope. So here's a little picture of what it looks like on a scope. It's super easy to do and I always wind up doing it while it's still connected uh, to the part itself. And that helps me to make sure I get it perfectly up and down. Um, this is jumping ahead a little bit, but there is a menu selection in here to bring up a crosshair within the recorder. Um, kind of a pro tip, that's a good way to make sure you're aligned properly. Um, but once you've got that on there, all you have to do is tighten this down. It makes a really secure um, mount to the gun. You've got no problems. The one thing you have to note is to change the battery. Take it off the scope, undo this cap. Battery comes out. It uses these buttonless batteries, okay? No little button top on the positive end. Um, so make sure you get the right kind of battery. Uh, but these are cheap, really easy to replace. The one that comes with it is, is good quality. Um, so you grab another flat top rechargeable, pop that in there, put the uh, cap back on. Make sure you line the threads up without cross threading anything. Get that tightened down, you're back on the gun and ready to go. Um, so once you've got it on the gun, if we're talking about setting it up, power button is right here. Press that, it's going to power up. And then you've got a menu control button right there in the center so you can turn the menu on. Um, sorry, I got that wrong, looking at the wrong thing menu buttons over here as you're facing it, it's on the right. So there are a couple of things that right away you'll want to use uh, the menu for. It, it's got a lot of menu options, I apologize, I, I'm not going to show that to you here in the video. Uh, but the main ones are, like I said, that crosshair reference. Um, and then you can tell it how you want it to wake up. Really those are the kind of the two menus I use on a regular basis. Um, this calls daytime mode color and it calls nighttime mode black and white. And you can also set whether or not you want the illuminator on. Um, it's so easy to change this battery and it's so easy to have spare batteries. Um, I run with this illuminator. I have used it with an external illuminator, but let me tell you at air gun ranges, and I'm talking out to hundred yards, uh, you don't need anything more than this. It's got three brightness levels. You can move it in and out to adjust spot to flood. Um, so you can have it wide or you can have it narrow. Um, you can kind of, I usually just kind of set it in the middle. I don't worry about it. it if I run low on battery, I'm just going to pop another battery in there. So you can save the weight and additional expense of an external illuminator. And the, uh, what I would call knockoff versions of this, uh, you almost always need an external illuminator. So I like that about this, this unit. All right, so on the gun, tighten this down. The next thing you're going to do is use this dial right here to bring your crosshair into focus. Focus your crosshair with that, okay? This focus on this end, this is so you can focus the menu elements. So if you focus the el menu elements here, focus the reticle here, and then use your parallax wheel to focus in on your target, it's all going to be set up and ready to go and you're going to get good images out of the unit. Super easy to set up. Let's go through what the video is meant to be about, which is you seeing through scopes about the image quality that you've got uh, on the PARD unit itself. So I've shot through three different scopes. A first focal plane Hawk Air Max, it's a 4 to 16. Um, the PARD really likes that scope. Very good imagery, um, and you'll see that at, at pretty good distances. Um, I've also got some footage through an Element Optics 6 to 24 second focal plane scope. It also really liked that scope. And then um, I've got a newer 4 to 16 Element Optics Helix that's a first focal plane. Um, that reticle is a little finer than the one on the Hawk. So it has a little bit of a harder time focusing on that reticle at four power. Um, 
but at higher powers, um, you know, the reticle is really easy to, to get focused in. So it, it's got a lot of utility. And uh, after we look at some video, we'll come on back and you can, uh, well, you can hear what I have to say about it. I guess that's what you're here watching the video for. So let's go check out some images. We're looking through the Hawk Air Max. It's a first focal plane scope, four to 16 power. And we're actually watching this with the video slowed down to 25% of real time. So it is possible to take the PARD video and slow it down a little bit. This target is at 30 yards. It is not high frame rate video. So you are going to get a little bit of choppiness when you slow it down, but I think this is certainly acceptable to watch. And I think on this Hawk in particular, you get a really clean view of the reticle. Now, I didn't mention this before, but you guys will have figured it out. Um, you can see it's in color. So this is in daytime mode and this is uh, sort of a cloudy day. That I'm recording on. This last clip I've changed the speed to 50% so this is not quite as slowed down as I shoot the Target Forge Devil Eye here. I've switched over to the Element Optics Helix. This is the 6 to 24 second focal plane scope and we're looking at targets at 55 yards. This is on six power, so lowest magnification setting. The PARD really likes the second focal plane. You can get this reticle just perfectly focused um, and it makes for really nice clean video. So this is daytime recording with the Helix 6 to 24 by 50 second focal plane scope. You're hearing the onboard audio from the PARD. It's boosted to 200% in iMovie. And what you're going to be seeing is maximum magnification within the scope and then increased digital magnification within the part itself. That is maximum magnification right there. One point five, two point oh, two point five, three times digital magnification three point five and then back here we are in day mode looking out to 90 yards with the hawk uh, this is an Air Max 4 to 16 by 50. This is at 4 power. And we're going to take it all the way to 16. Sorry. With the Hawk at maximum magnification, we're going to run through that progression again of digital magnification within the PARD unit itself. That's 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, 
2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, and back out. I doubt most people are going to buy a digital day-night scope specifically to record things during the day but I think it is worthwhile to see the quality of the day scope because it is pretty good. What you want to see is how does it work at night. So here we are at 50 yards looking through the first focal plane element optics helix 4 to 16 scope uh, we're using the onboard illuminator and in a couple of minutes we'll cycle through the different levels. So now we're using the scopes zoom. You're going to see the reticle increase in size because this is a first focal plane scope but you get really nice detail um, and like I said the onboard illuminator is plenty adequate for brightening up this scene this is on illumination level one This is at maximum magnification, so 16 power. And remember that the focus of the deer in this case is based on the use of your parallax. Now I'm going to run through the changes on the onboard illuminator. You'll see that flash, flash, and then it'll go back. What's happening is the camera really doesn't need more than that lowest level of illumination and so it flashes just a little bit as it adjusts to the change in light uh, but really um, almost all the shooting I've done I have left the illuminator on setting number one and it's worked perfectly for me. Before we move on to the pest control part of the video I just want to go back to that 90 yard target we're looking at it through the Hawk 4 to 16 um, we're taking it up to 16 magnification um, and then I'm gonna use the PARD digital zoom to bump that up just a little bit so remember that goes from like no magnification up to 3.5 times magnification and it's in 0.5 steps so give you an idea of clarity uh, this is a bench rest target at 90 yards and we're at IR level 3 and if you look closely you can pretty much tell what it says it's pretty clear to be honest with you Here we are in a barn looking up at a sparrow. I uh, probably should throw out a warning. Uh, this is the pest control portion of the video, so if you don't like that and you just like this scope as a I'm going to go out and watch some animals, um, well, it's probably too late for you to turn things off because that sparrow is dead. The parallax adjustment wasn't perfect on this one, it was at pretty close range. Here's what it looks like at 10% playback speed.
different sparrow, same result. The barn we're in has three silos outside of it, and we stepped out and kind of took a peek up around one of the covered ladder sections, and this happened. This was like that scene in Aliens where Corporal Hicks puts his head through the suspended ceiling and looks to see all of the aliens crawling upside down towards him. <laughs> this was crazy. Check it out. Turns out you can make it rain starlings if you get to the right place at the right time. It was really hard to figure out and calculate, well, calculate's the wrong word, but figure out the holdovers uh, for these things when we're essentially shooting up a ladder 20 or 30 feet at what's nearly point blank range. Got one. It's a double. But as you can tell, we did figure it out. <laughs> the challenge was shooting in the dark on uneven ground with a sharp metal surround on our head and starlings dropping and dive bombing on top of us. We had to shoot and then if we connected with something, get out of the way so they didn't hit us in the face coming down. About two-thirds of them fell into the open hatches back into the silo. And what that meant was that while we couldn't recover them, they'd be left there for the cats the next morning. This went on for about 45 minutes before we had them all cleared out. Starlings don't like to fly at night, so occasionally we had them just land on the ground, not willing to move. And yes, everything in that trough is bird feces. This was absolutely a blast on what would have otherwise been kind of a slow shooting night, a week night where we got together to go out and see what we might find. But I'll, I'll tell you, you can't do shooting like this without night vision. Uh, there just isn't any other way to do it. Starlings in particular react to green light uh, in a way that some other birds don't. And if you want to get these guys while they're roosting, where they're most stable, you need quality night vision. I'm not sure we scratched the surface on what lives in this section of this silo regularly, and I know we'll be back. So before we wrap up, here's just a couple of other clips taken from a different night out shooting. Uh, here we have a sparrow. That was at about 30 yards. And at a different part of the barn, this pigeon was taking refuge from the wind and cold. These two wisely kept their heads down. And finally we come to a pair of rabbits who've been digging up the pasture.
I didn't have the parallax quite right on that one, but this one looks a little bit better. There is one thing to know about getting video off your PARD and onto your computer. For whatever reason, it stretches your video horizontally and you need to use software to get it back to the proper aspect ratio. I use a program called Prism on my Mac. It's really simple to use. Basically all you have to do is use the big green plus to select the files off your micro SD card. And then you pick the output folder on your computer and finally click file options in the output format tab. I guess it's not really a tab, but a button. Anyway, it's going to open up this file options. You click on video output options and tell it to resize the video. You want to resize it to 1440 and 1080 and then tell it to constrain the aspect ratio to 4x3, which is a standard TV format. Click OK and then it'll go back to the main window where you click convert and wait for a couple minutes and all your videos will be switched over so that they look normal and the view down your scope will be round instead of some sort of oval. For what it's worth, this is the same program I use to horizontally flip video coming out of a scope cam that uses a prism like the SideShot or the Eagle Vision or Orion cameras. Um, you can also use this to correct any angular problems you have, like if the camera wasn't aligned to the scope properly, and sometimes your reticle is a little bit off, you can make some adjustments there. It's a pretty handy program, and I'm guessing there's something equivalent on the Windows side of things. Well, you've either made it all the way to the end, on the review or <laughs> you've skipped ahead uh, but I think you've missed something if you've done that let me just run this down for you so what you have for under $400 okay minus the uh, add-on mount you have a good quality solid infrared both infrared and daytime uh, scope recording setup. Uh, you, you add about $100 and you get the Eagle Vision mount. Um, you can flip this easily and very consistently from scope to scope. Um, in daytime mode, it takes good video. Um, it's out of the way. Um, for nighttime, I think it takes really good video. And you've got an onboard illuminator that's going to take care of of I think really all the illumination you're gonna need. It's easy and quick to change the batteries and batteries are easy to come by and easy to keep charged. Um, it's quick to move it from gun to gun because all you have to do is fit it onto the scope and then adjust to match up your reticle. It's got good recording capability. Um, it's not super high frame rate. Um, it's not 4K, so, I mean, there are other solutions that are claiming that. Um, but what I do think is you get quality results on the recording. And it's fun to be able to watch back that stuff. Um, it does have Wi-Fi, so you can beam this to a tablet or something like that. I haven't played with that. I don't know that I will. But it is, it is in there. Um, I would say for the price... And I want to speak directly to anybody who might be thinking about buying what I'd consider one of the off-brand versions of this. They, they look pretty similar, and there's a couple of companies that have them out there. Two things. I have felt and used both, 
and the quality is better here. I think the quality of the video, particularly the day video and the low light video look really good on the off-brand version that I had an opportunity to play with. Um, I think the night vision looks better on this one. Um, and I think the day vision works or looks about the same. I think that one did excel. Uh, and again, I'm not naming names here, but that one did excel with low light, but not in the IR spectrum uh, version. This one definitely mounts better. It mounts easier. Um, it's more repeatable when you take it off the gun and put it on the gun. Um, and mostly that's due to the Eagle Vision mount, which is made for this and I don't think connects up to the other ones. Um, this one I think would definitely be more likely to survive being dropped off a truck or somehow coming loose and falling off your scope or you set it somewhere you think is secure and it's not uh, and it winds up falling down. This is just a, it's a heavier and heavier duty version. It's, it's just the buttons are a little nicer, the fit and finish is nicer. Um, and then it comes down to, are you going to be able to get warranty service if you need it? So here's the thing. Um, if there's an American company, and I'm not going to get all pro USA on this, I'm simply saying because I'm in America, if I'm dealing with an American company, is there's a problem with it, I can send it to them and they can send me back a new one or they can do whatever they need to do to make it right. If you have a problem with one of these and you purchased it from a non-domestic source and the answer is sure send it back um, there are some things we as americans can't ship to china we cannot it's illegal and if you do it you run the risk of getting into some serious trouble um, night vision equipment is on that list so you definitely want to make your purchase from somebody who's going to be able to handle any kind of warranty problem you have, whether it's bad wiring, a bad chip, it's an electronic device. It could fail. You want to have somebody who's going to do that negotiation, navigating, whatever you want to call it. You want to have somebody who's going to make it right for you. And for under 400 bucks, you can get one of these from Northeast Air Guns. Um, and I would definitely, if you're in the market for something like this, I would definitely check those guys out. They're doing a great job starting up a, a air gun shop out in the Boston, Massachusetts area. Um, great guys, ran into them at RMAC, had great time getting to know them. And, uh, and I'm pleased so far with what they've sent, uh, what they've sent our way. So if you have any questions, uh, fire them down in the comments and I'll do my best to get the answer if I don't know the answer. Uh, but folks, until the next video, shoot safe, shoot straight, and we'll see you around.